That's another one. Right, Rebecca, we have a class now. We're going to start any minute now, and I am going to mute you all. Um, if that's okay, and then I'll unmute you at the end. If anyone's got any questions or wants to talk about anything, you can have a chat after. But we will be finishing at um, uh, 20 past five. Okay. Right. So I have muted you all, and we are going to come to a comfortable seat. Now, for those of you who have not done yoga before, a comfortable seat means exactly that. You might think that you've got to sit cross-legged. Um, you don't. For lots of people, it's a comfortable way to sit. But um, basically, I'd like you to prop yourself on the very edge of your cushion or block so that you're, you are tilted forward slightly, um, which allows your hips to be slightly higher than your your knees that's what we want so if it ends up with you sitting with your legs out straight that's absolutely fine if you can sit comfortably with your knees like this then do if the only way you can sit comfortably and upright is against a wall or your sofa please take that option you know this is about comfort and we're going to be sitting here for about five minutes i guess so the the, the more comfortable we can make ourselves without fidgeting the better um, the remit I had for today was to do some stress busting stuff to introduce you to the joys and my passion of yoga um, that hopefully you can bring into your working life as well as your daily life and just sort of help alleviate some of the stress that so many of us have been under over in these challenging times. So let's just come to our comfortable seat, have a fidget and a wriggle. If you're sitting cross-legged like me, try not to have one foot on top of the other. Try and have them so that um, no limbs are impinging on any others. And just take a moment to really work out whether this is a comfortable seat for you. So if you feel like you're pitching too far forward, have a little shuffle and we don't want to be leaning too far back. So just anywhere that allows you to be really upright. So we're going to just take a few moments thinking about what that, what that feels like for us. It might be a long time since you've actually given um, full focus to how you're sitting. But what we're trying to achieve here, if it helps you to visualize it, we're trying to create space between each and every vertebrae in our spine so that we can lengthen and lift. Because once we're able to find space in our spine, we've got more space to breathe. And, and the breath is at the heart of everything. The stress we carry around with us, the, the, um, the problems we have physically with um, you know, our movement, it all starts with the breath and how much room we've got to do it. So we're really going to just get to where we can um, create lots of space to breathe nice and easily. So really just tune in with how you are um, seated right now. Let your hands rest gently wherever, either in your lap or on your knees. And if it feels okay, just let your eyes softly close or lower your gaze if you don't like closing your eyes. And just start to bring your attention inwards. So we're tuning in as we turn inwards. So yoga is not all about um, the physical practice where we're doing busting these wonderful shapes to put on Instagram. It's very much an internal focus on how we're feeling right now, because it's the only place we live is right now. So just have a think about how you're feeling right now. Perhaps you've had a bit of a rush, or perhaps it's been a bit stressful trying to connect to this Zoom call. So just thinking about letting all of that go. So when you climb onto your yoga mat, this is your little oasis of calm. We can leave the day behind. It will still be there for us when we finish. Just have a think once more about your posture. Is there any more space you can create between the vertebrae? And just imagine that you're very slightly holding um, a small orange underneath your chin. So just tuck your chin very slightly. And what that does, it straightens the cervical spine or neck which is, of course, an extension of the whole spine. 
Now let's bring our attention to the forehead. Just trying to relax your furrowed brow. Let your eyelids be soft. Release your jaw. Sometimes we have a tendency to hold a lot of tension in our jaw, so let your teeth gently part. And then think about your shoulders. Let them really be heavy here. Imagine that gravity is just drawing them down towards the floor. Just sense the heaviness there. Notice if you are already aware of tension being carried here. We're going to address that in a little while. So no need to do anything about what you're finding. We're just observing at the moment of what's going on. Now bring your attention into your hips and your seat. And I'm trying to visualize how we're seated. Are we sitting evenly into both sides of our pelvis and on our sitting bones? Just bringing an awareness of being supported beneath us. And then thinking about how the thighs are feeling, the knees, the shins, the ankles and the feet. Just trying to work out what we're holding and where. And then traveling back up the body, bringing our attention to the hands and the fingertips. Let the fingertips just softly rest wherever they are. Make sure you're not gripping onto your knees for dear life. If you haven't done yoga before, there's possibly a little apprehension about what to expect. We won't be doing handstand on this particular occasion, so you needn't worry about that. And now that we've just set ourselves up in this lovely seated position, already it might not be feeling lovely to you, but just keeping your awareness with it, having a little wriggle if you need to. And let's now bring the focus to our bellies. Now, for many of us, we've spent our lives walking around, holding a certain amount of tension in our abdominal muscles, just trying to keep it all held in. Well, today, nobody's looking, let it all hang out. I want you to bring your awareness to the breath, moving the belly. So if you can imagine watching a small child or a, an animal breathing, you'll notice the rise and fall of their belly. And I just want you to bring your awareness and visualization to that happening in your body now. So with every breath, as the lungs fill, the diaphragm moves down and it pushes the belly out. And then as we exhale and the lungs empty, the diaphragm moves up. So just sitting with that awareness on the breath for just a couple of breaths. Really breathing into that belly space. Maybe this is totally alien to you, but just, just, just bear with it. We're going to keep moving on. And still observing the breath, let's move our attention up to the rib cage now and see if you can become aware of the movement of the ribs into the side body. So if you're not really aware of the, the actual sensation of it happening, see if you can visualize it. All those intercostal muscles between the ribs, just expanding and contracting with every breath. Just imagine and visualize the rib cage flaring here as you breathe in. And then shifting the awareness once more to the collarbones. Think about where your collarbones are and nestled not far below the collarbones at the very tops of the lungs. And if you deepen your breath slightly, you might feel the point at which your neck muscles engage. This happens when the very tops of the lungs fill with air. It's often we're not aware of that at all. So it might be something of a revelation to you. So just for a few more breaths, being aware of this, what we call three part breath, the belly breath, the side body breath and into the very top of the chest. Just observing the ebb and flow of the breath as it arrives and departs. 
you can almost imagine it like waves coming in and out of a beach. That's a lovely thought right now, isn't it? So sometimes if you have difficulty sleeping, this is quite a nice process to go through, the belly breath, the side body breath, and then the, the upper chest. And just imagine the breath coming and going, like gentle waves. So slowly bringing your awareness back into the here and now, letting go of any control of the breath or awareness, you can gently open your eyes, back your eyelids open. Let's bring ourselves into the here and now. And just in case you've lost a little bit of alignment with all that concentrating on the breath, draw your attention back to sitting nice and tall. Maybe you need to adjust whichever position you chose because um, you've become a little fidgety or uncomfortable, by all means do that. We still want to be seated for um, the next couple of things and then we'll move position. So we won't be here long. So sitting nice and tall once more, really feeling that you're creating space between your hips and your ribs. Let's just draw the shoulders up, back, round and down. Imagine that orange tucked under your chin or whatever fruit you want. Mm -hmm. And then very gently and carefully, we're going to take our right ear over our right shoulder. Now I've noticed that the camera mirrors this. I am actually doing the right, but whichever way you go, make sure that we swap to the other side. Now, as we do this, nice and gently, you should feel quite an intense stretch between your left earlobe and your left shoulder. Now I want you to really weight down in that left shoulder just to intensify the stretch. So this isn't an all out, how far can you go really feel the burn? Those days are gone. So it's just kind of getting to the point where you think, oh yeah, I can really feel that now. That's far enough. Nothing should hurt in yoga. We don't want to go that far. So it's just exploring how your neck is feeling today. If you've had a busy day, this might feel quite a wondrous stretch or it might feel horrible, in which case just go really easily. Now from here, just turn your face and look up at the ceiling. So keeping your ear or keeping the head tilted, we're just, we're just rotating on the cervical spine now. We're just glancing up at the ceiling. We're not going to stay here long. And then bring your gaze center or looking forward again and slowly bring your head back to neutral. Just loop the shoulders there for a moment and forward and back. Bring yourself back to your posture. And let's take the left ear or the opposite ear over to the opposite shoulder. Really weight down in the right shoulder here. Feel the stretch between the ear and the shoulder. And just notice, make a mental note to yourself how it feels compared to the other side. Notice if you're carrying tension one side, especially if you commit the cardinal sin of using your phone like this. Um, you will be very aware of tightness, usually in the opposite side. So just noticing, really weigh down heavy with that, with the right shoulder. Now we're going to turn our faces to look up at the ceiling here, noticing how that feels. So palms are just gently resting wherever they are. They're not involved in this. And then bring the gaze back to the front and come back to neutral. So taking a little movement, anything that kind of frees that off, um, take a movement here. Let's tune in with the posture once more, sit nice and tall and get the sense that you are squeezing your shoulders together here. We really make an exaggeration of it. So we're opening in the front body, we're releasing the te tension that we hold in the pectoral muscles, where if you've sat, slouched over a desk all day typing, this is the perfect antidote for that. So squeeze. Get your elbows behind you, squeeze them together so we've got very little space between the shoulder blades and then just release. Bringing your left hand down beside your left hip. If you're perched up on something, you might find this difficult, you might want to come off, but we want our fingertips just to gently be on the floor here. They're not playing, playing much of a part, but um, we want them to be touching the floor. Sitting nice and tall, we're going to take our right arm directly up. Let's over exaggerate it, take the um, shoulder with you and then let the shoulder slide down. So we've got an intentional stretch in this arm. It's not just passively hanging here. We're reaching the fingers up, really creating lots of space in the side body here. 
and very gently and carefully weighing heavily into the right hip. Let's take a dip over towards the left. So we're weighing down in the right hip so that we get this beautiful opening from all the way from the hip to the armpit here. So we're active in the fingertips. We're just gently bending into the left elbow here. So weighing heavy into both sitting bones so we haven't lifted up to facilitate this stretch, just sitting nice and heavy. And then slowly let's come back to center and bring that arm down. Just take whatever movement feels nice. Your body will automatically know what it wants to do when it's finished doing something where it's been challenged. So just go with that. And then bringing your right hand next to your right hip Nice and tall, find the lift and length, and then let's just stretch up with the left hand here. Fingertips are active. Take that shoulder up and then slide it down so that you can feel the difference. And then let's just take that dip over towards the right hand side. So weighing down heavily into the left hip, really anchoring down so that we're opening in the side body. And then slowly up to center and bring that arm down. This time, right hand comes to left knee and left hand, just place it behind you, either on whatever you're sitting on or just behind your bum. Just sit really tall here, find your lift and length and already you'll find quite a stretch into the shoulder. Sit really nice and tall, try and peel that left shoulder back just a tiny bit. Remember this isn't how far can you go. And then gently look over the left shoulder. So we've got a nice spinal twist here, nice and gentle. If it doesn't feel gentle, just come back a notch. You know, just, just release the tension on your hands, stay a bit more facing front. But we want the rib cage to turn. That's what we're after in this movement. We're just getting that spinal rotation. If your neck has already done enough for today, you don't have to look over the shoulder. It's all about listening to your body and where it's at today. We're not going through a checklist of, oh, I've got to look like you know the person next to me or whatever else is going on it's all about feeling i always tell you what the benefit of what we're doing is and you find that your own way and let's come back to center take a moment there and then take the left hand to the right knee the right hand comes behind and we use the right hand to just help us lift and lengthen that a little bit more and peeling the right shoulder back just a little bit that allows that twist and then we can look over the right shoulder. So just noticing once more, comparing the two things, how they felt. And then slowly release and come back to center. Ooh. So you'll probably be glad to know that we have finished sitting like this. So you can unravel yourselves. And if I can get you all to come to all fours. Now, if if you've got knobbly knees or sensitive knees or you think you'd feel better having your knees padded then grab your blanket and just pop the pop the blanket underneath your knees to support you we want to be comfortable always so it's all about finding comfort and we're going to set ourselves up into a very neutral position here so we want to make sure that wrists are directly underneath shoulders and that um, knees are directly below hips, that way we're, we're nicely supported here. And we're going to spread our hands really wide, like starfish, so that we're able to um, put our weight into each and every fingertip. And just make a little gripping motion, as though you're trying to um, grip the mat with your fingers. And gazing down directly between both thumbs. Let's start to push the mat away, and push the floor away actively as we bring our chin into our chest and really round through our shoulders. So take a quick glance of where we're going with this and then make it your own. So we're trying to push the mat away and in doing so we've domed through the shoulders, lots of space between the shoulders. You might feel a stretch into your lower back, just noticing how you feel. And I expect some of you will be holding your breath, try to reconnect with your breath here. And very slowly and mindfully, let's start to drop the belly as we bring our chin forward. So nice, slow movements here, nothing too fast or exaggerated. And when we're in this position, chin is pointing forwards. 
We're sending our hips high, but we're also pushing away from the mat. So this might feel, I hope it feels quite active. So really push into the, the fingertips and the heels of the hands here. Tops of the feet are down. And then let's take it once more, curling in into angry cat position. So tucking the chin in, really pushing the mat away here, doming through the shoulders. Noticing how you feel, breathing, and let's reverse that and bring it the other way. So belly starts to drop, feel the transition as the different muscles take over. Once we're in this position, chin is forward, hips are high, but we're still pushing away actively from the mat. So there's lots going on here. And then very slowly, just take your hands a little bit further forward than they are now. And what we're going to do, I, I want you to do this very slowly and carefully. Just going to bring our body weight slowly forward until we are, we are over our hands, so we don't want to overextend here. So we're just starting to stretch into the hip flexors, which are down the front of the leg. If you spend a lot of time at your desk, or if you're a runner or a cyclist, you will be very aware of where your hip flexors are. And now we're going to take that movement back. So we're pushing into the hands quite actively here, looking towards the thumbs, bottom comes back towards your heels. And then when we get there, we're going to slowly start coming forwards. Bring the body weight forwards, just noticing where you feel that little pull in the front of your hips. If this hurts your lower back at all, stay with, with um, being in this position in child's pose. So pushing into the fingertips here, really push away actively, feel what's going on in the shoulders. Just connect with your breath. Once more forward. Just noticing how that feels. Maybe widen your feet a little and see if that makes it any more comfortable. And then we're gonna push all the way back this time until our bottoms reach our heels. If you find it difficult in this position, you can always wedge something between your, your bum and your heels to make it more comfy, but it's good enough just to be in this outstretched position if that's not comfortable. So very slowly and mindfully, let's walk the hands in towards um, our knees. And we're gonna tuck our toes here, so just tuck the toes under. Walk our hands in and slowly we're going to rock back onto the feet and as slow as you possibly can, keeping your knees bent, bring your chin right in towards your chest and then slowly unfurl. But let your arms and shoulders be really heavy here and I want you to kind of hang here for a moment and see um, how gravity can assist you in this. You'll feel a releasing in your lower back, by allowing your shoulders and arms to be heavy. It's just a delight after a busy day. So just relish being here in this kind of ragdoll position. Slowly, 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 one first breath at a time. Let's just uncurl, keeping the chin tucked in all the way to the top. This stops us getting dizzy, but we're doing it so slowly. Hopefully there won't be any of that. And slowly coming until we're Upright. Okay. I can't see what many of you were up to because you've switched yourselves off, which is fine. But all right, so we're just going to take a moment here standing. I want you to bring your feet to hip width apart. So lift and spread your toes. I hope you've all got bare feet. Very important. The feedback that um, your your brain gets from your feet. Um, it's very important, especially to balances, which is what we're going to do now. We're just going to have a quick look at um, a balance because it's something that we lose as we get older and the busier we get, it's a skill that we just lose. So it's good to address that. So just find a comfortable standing position, perhaps rock forward into your toes, rock back into your heels, and then just find that neutral place. And then roll out to the outsides of your feet and then to the insides of your feet back to centre. And now with your pelvis, very slightly tuck your pelvis, so you're kind of curling it up, which means that your hips will now be directly over your feet. I'm going to roll the shoulders round and back, draw them down, and now our shoulders are over our hips, which are over our feet. 
And then we're going to look straight ahead. Let the palms gently face forward slightly. It means we've externally rotated the shoulders here, which helps relieve that stress that we get from the, from the desk shoulder position. So standing here, this is called mountain pose. So we're, we're strong and intentional. And what I'm going to ask you to do is close your eyes. And I just want you to feel that you are actually balancing in this position. It's so rare that we find absolute stillness when we are set up like this. You might suddenly be aware of what's going on in your feet, all those little bones and muscles working together. Perhaps you're aware of energy passing through your body, perhaps in your fingertips, your toes. So just taking a moment here to notice how you feel. No right or wrong way to do this, as long as you set yourself up. And then slowly open your eyes again. Let's bring our attention, our intention, and our weight into our left leg. Bring the hands up to the hips. Now it's not cheating at all to have a wall close by or a chair. Anything that helps you achieve what we're setting out to do is a good thing. Try it without, first of all, because what this is doing, as well as challenging our uh, balance, is we're strengthening the standing leg, which is always good. So hands come to hips or maybe out to the side, wherever you feel most comfortable. And we're slowly just going to bend into the right leg and bring the toes up next to the left ankle. So toes are still on the floor. And then if you've kind of pitched into this left hip. Let's just realign ourselves here. So nice and tall, thinking about the pelvis being tucked. And if you can, let's just see if we can get those toes off the floor by bringing the knee up. Now you don't have to bring your knee as high as I've got mine. You can just have the toes hovering off the floor. Maybe you're touching the wall, absolutely fine. Once you're there, let's just rotate into the ankle. And then the other way. And then let's flex and point, flex and point. And slowly lower. Well done for all of you who did it. I, I can only see a couple of you, so well done to you two. The one big tip that I've got to tell you is to find something at your eye level that you can fix on while you're balancing, and that helps. Don't, you know, if you can find something just to gaze at, it really does help. So let's see how we go on the other side. So let's set the posture up nice and tall. Let's start to bring the weight out of the left foot. Hands go wherever you want them. Once we're there, still breathing, so don't hold your breath when you do this. Let's try and get the toes of this standing leg off the floor. So we're starting to Build some heat into this thigh here. You may or may not be aware of that. If you need to just put a fingertip on the wall, that's absolutely fine. Let's start rolling into the ankle here in one direction and then back in the other direction. And then flex and point, flex and point. If any of you are finding this easy peasy, maybe you challenge yourself by bringing the knee up a little bit higher but if that's just fine stay where you are and hopefully your legs feeling nice and warm now and then we can take that leg down and just have a little walk out here i'm sorry this is such a whistle stop tour of yoga there's so much i'd love to share with you but i'm trying to give you a little bit of a little taste of everything that might benefit you after a long working day so things that you can easily do at home so you might or might not be happy to know that we're going to lay down now so very slowly and carefully just bringing yourself down to the mat and lowering yourself down one elbow at a time until we're laying down if you've got a ponytail like me you might want to just move your toggle out of the way because it's quite uncomfortable we want the soles of the feet to be flat on the mat. Knees are parallel and about hip width apart, so feet are hip width apart. Really get the sense that you're spreading your shoulder blades out flat on the mat. And just take a moment here to roll the pelvis forward and back until you feel like you've flattened your spine here. Maybe just shut your eyes for a moment, see what this feels like with our attention on our spine. 
Maybe tuck the chin just a little to get some more length in the cervical spine. And then turning the palms down so they're by the side of our hips. We're slowly going to tilt the pelvis in towards us and start raising the hips. Just a few centimeters and then we're going to lay the spine back down. We're going to tilt the pelvis forward. So we're doing this kind of rolling forward and back. And each time we're lifting the hips a little higher, taking care not to let the knees splay apart. So small and gentle movements, you might need to adjust where your feet are in relation to your bum. You might need them closer in, you might need them further away, have a little play with it. But each time we're going a couple of millimeters higher with the hips, until the next time we bring the hips up, we're going to stay up. So imagine that you are pressing down into your yoga mat or, or the surface that you're on, you're sending your knees forward, your hips are high, your glutes or your buttock muscles are clenched tightly. And if you can, try and walk your shoulder blades together here, which just brings you a little more height. Just going to take a couple of moments here. Got a nice stretch of the hip flexor at the front, front of the hip here. Make sure your knees are together. If you can't help your knees splaying apart, sometimes it's quite good just to wedge something in there, like a cushion or something, which helps keep your focus where it should be. Hopefully you're well aware of your glute muscles having warmed up now. So slowly in one vertebrae at a time, we're going to lower the spine down to the mat. Stretch one leg away long and the other leg away long. Let the ankles roll out to the sides. And we're going to take the arms up and overhead and have a full body stretch here. So point away with the toes, stretch away with the fingers, really stretch, 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 stretch. And release everything. Leave the arms over the head. And now let's take both heels over to the left hand corner of the mat and then let's take both hands over to the left corner of the mat we have to take our head as well so what we're doing we've got this kind of banana shape where our bodies are still in the middle of the mat but our extremities are cranked over to the left so adjust accordingly so that you've got um, a nice doable stretch rather than something that's making you hold your breath or just doesn't feel anything other than a delicious stretch, which is what we're after. We're after something that just feels like you're creating some space in your body, lots of space to breathe. And then let's slowly bring the arms back to center, feet back to center, just take a moment here. And then let's take the heels over to the right side of the mat. And then the hands over to the right side of the mat and the head, leaving the um, so we're weighing down heavy in the buttocks here. They're staying exactly where they were. And we're seeing how the stretch feels on this side. So really feel the side body on the left is opening up here. Again, we're creating lots of space. Stretch it away long. And then slowly let's bring everything back to the center. And just take a moment here. Bring one knee in towards the chest and then the other and find the edge of the mat with your feet. So take your left foot to the left edge, right foot to the right edge, flatten your spine into the mat. We're just going to windscreen wiper the knees left and right, very gently, very slowly. Again, we're just mobilizing the spine. This is quite a nice one to do in the morning when you first wake up, if you feel a bit stiff as is cat and cow that we were doing earlier. They're really nice ones for mobilizing the spine. And then coming to stillness, let's hug one knee in towards the chest and then the other. Perhaps taking the arms around the shins, it depends how close your knees are to your chest. If you can't get them very close, just let gravity assist you here. Get, them, get your knees so that the, the weight of them is just allowing them to hang here. Just take a moment, maybe having a little roll from side to side. And 
And then very slowly and carefully, let's roll over. It doesn't matter which side you go to. Just take a moment, just take a couple of breaths. And then we're very slowly and carefully going to come up to seated. Gosh, I feel like we're thundering through this. I apologize if it feels the same for you. But my remit was 45 minutes. So come to seated, you can sit however you like. If you want to prop yourself again on something on the edge of your blanket or um, a, a block or a cushion, whatever feels nice. Hopefully you've all got a strap or a, um, a dressing gown belt. If you haven't, you can improvise. If you've got a sock nearby, that will do just as well. We're just going to um, do a couple of things with our shoulders to help relieve shoulder tension. So let's bring our awareness back to posture again. Lots of space between the vertebrae. Have a little play with your pelvis. See if by tilting it slightly, you get a better feel of how you're seated. Tucking the chin once more. Let's bring the fingertips to the collarbones here. So elbows are out nice and wide at shoulder height. And let's start to draw some really big circles. Make them as big and expansive as you can, really work into the shoulder joint. So you might have clunking and clicking and creaking. I have, but only in one direction, it's really weird. So just noticing what is normal for you. And then stopping when your elbows are behind you and really trying to get your elbows as far behind you as you can. They won't go very far, but we're getting this lovely opening in the front body here. So we're squeezing the shoulders together, elbows are high. Oh, and then let's bring the um, elbows in the opposite direction. So whichever direction you were going in, if you can remember, I'm not sure if I'm going in the opposite direction now, um, but just taking a few circles in this direction. And then stopping when the elbows come in front of us and keeping them at chest height and hands are just loosely sitting on top of the collarbones. We're going to bring the elbows to meet. So what we're doing is we're creating lots of space between the shoulders now. So rather than squeezing them together, we're pulling them apart by pushing our elbows together. If you're wearing them up here, see if you can just let them relax a little and drop. And then slowly just release. Now, if you've got your strap, let's grab it and I'll show you what we're gonna do with this. If you haven't got a strap, you can just work with, with the top you've got on. So basically fling one end over your right shoulder and grab hold of it. And then reaching behind with your left hand, grab the tail. So we've got left hand behind, right hand in front. Slowly, I want you to bring your right elbow up beside your ear. Make sure you're not kind of crunching your neck over, it just needs to be alongside. So we're holding on with both hands, but the only hand that's gonna do any work now is your left one. I want you to pull that strap or your right hand down, or if you're holding onto your T-shirt or your top, left hand is pulling down, right elbow is pointing up. So we're stretching into the triceps muscles here. You should be quite aware of a good old stretch going on there. And while we're here stretching the tricep, you're stretching the bicep in the opposite arm, just bring your attention back to your posture once more, sitting nice and tall. And release. Ooh, hopefully you felt that. And then let's go to the other side now. So just chucking the um, whatever you've got, your dressing gown belt, your scarf, your, your belt of any description or sock, anything will do. And um, this time we want left elbow up beside our ear, holding on at the top to the strap. And we're reaching behind with the right hand and pulling down. So just enough to feel that um, engagement of the tricep muscle in the left arm now. So pulling, pulling, pulling. And then releasing. And just let go and take a nice little forward and back. And taking your strap now and just bringing it above your head. And we're just going to bring, apply some tension to the strap. Imagine you're trying to pull it apart. We're going to bring it down and then we're going to take it up and over. It only comes down as far as 
perhaps your bra strap behind you. Sorry if there are any chaps tuning in. So you might need to adjust your grip on, on the strap here. So bring it down, bring it up, bring it over. So all the time we're keeping tension while we're just working through here. Just a few times forward and back, keeping the tension. So we're loading the muscles here. Once more forward. And release. So you can pop your strap to one side. Now hopefully your arms feel quite warmed up with all that activity. Now sitting nice and tall, in fact, bringing, if everybody can sit like this with your feet in front of you, so a bit like how we were um, lined up for bridge pose when we were laying down. Just clasp your, your knees, have them a little bit apart, and imagine that you're pulling your body up and forward. So we're really quite, if I show you from the side, we're really quite upright in our spine. It's almost like we're trying to stick our bums out here, get our chest through our knees. And now let's take it the other way and really collapse into it. So curling down into the spine, feeling the stretch away from the shoulders into the lower back. Once more up and forward, nice and long. And release. And now this time we're going to take our hands behind and clasp the fingers and just straightening the arms and trying to lift the arms up. So it looks like this. Your shape might not look like mine, your shape is your shape. So just squeezing the shoulder blades together, feeling the um, opening of the front body, lots of space, and then lower and release. Now let's take that the opposite way, clasping the fingers, but this time, however you've clasped them, this is gonna feel all wrong, I want you to shift your fingers so the other little finger is at the back. We're going to round here and just push the hands away quite actively. Imagine you're hugging a tree here. And then release. And just setting aside anything you've got. We're, we've got time for a quick shavasana, which is the most important um, posture in a yoga session. This is where the body assimilates all the work that we've just been doing. So I want you to come now to um, a supine position, laying down. If you can get your blanket, make sure you're nice and warm and just lay down in the most comfortable position that you can. Now that might be with, um, I won't use my blanket yet. It might be with your legs, just traditionally this is Shavasana, which is corpse pose. So you just make like a corpse, it's not difficult. Or if you feel more comfortable with your knees up together, maybe knocking in towards each other, you take whichever version you like. But if you can lay in Shavasana with your legs outstretched, ankles rolled out to the sides, just take a moment wriggling from hip to hip, taking a little roll from one side to the other. Palms are upturned. And just like we did at the beginning of the practice, let's draw our attention within again. Turn in and tune in. And just become aware of what sensations you're aware of as we're lying here. In our final minute or two of the practice. So letting the fingertips softly curl in towards the palms. Noticing if you're holding any tension anywhere, just seeing if you can let it go. If you find any tension, the best way to release is to make the tension even worse. So perhaps if everybody squeezes really hard into their fists, squeeze into your uh, buttock muscles, really make everything as active as you can, press your arms down, make a terrible face, really screw your face up and then release everything. Just let it go. Make it worse for it to get better. And then just bringing your attention back to your belly breath. Just noticing the rise and fall. Noticing how you feel. 
We really have just scratched the surface this evening, but hopefully you've had a little antidote to a busy day. Noticing how your breath is moving through the body. Noticing how you feel. If you're aware of the buzz of energy through your body. Slowly and mindfully, let's just bring a little bit of movement to our fingers and toes. Perhaps rubbing the fingertips over the tops of the thumbs. Circling into the ankles. And then bringing one knee in towards the chest and then the other. Let's just take a little rock and roll here if that feels comfortable from side to side. Just massaging into your lower back. And provided you haven't got low blood pressure, we're all going to roll over onto our right side. So if you've got low blood pressure, go onto the left. But outstretch the arm, the right arm. Just cradle your head for a moment here. Just going to take a few breaths. Letting the blood pressure equalize. And then slowly and mindfully, let's bring ourselves up to a seated position for the last time. Sit however you want, we're going to be here for less than a minute. And then bringing the palms together at your heart center, just applying a little bit of pressure here. Bring a bit of dignity to your posture for the last time. Imagine or visualize where you're sitting on your sitting bones here. Lots of space in the spine. And let's tuck our chins right in there, dropping the head towards the fingertips in a gesture of acknowledgement for the time that we've set aside um, this evening to unite our minds, our bodies and our breath. I hope you've had a moment to kind of just tune in and tune out of the outside world for a little while here. And also I invite you to really think about how truly amazing your body is. Thank you for your practice. Namaste.